Hey, I'm Al Caraway. I'm coming at you live from New York. <laughs> it's past my bedtime. It's the time when my brain is shutting down, but we're gonna have fun anyways. Um, I'm gonna talk about the times when actually my entire life follows in the theme of going from bad to worse even worse so we're gonna talk about it a little a little bit um while we wait just a few minutes because maybe i'm a minute early maybe i'm not um pop in in the comment section where are you are you having a good day <laughs> are things going really well for you i sure hope so um i'm originally from new york that's where i was born and raised i joined the church when i was 21 in new york Moved to the West for like 10 years, 11 years, 10 years between Arizona and Utah. I don't know what I'm doing with my hands. And now we're back in New York. Uh, yeah. Ever since I joined the church though, at the age of 21 in New York, um, it's been an interesting journey. A very good one, but um, it's, it's, it's in the pattern of bad to worst, even worse. I am consistently being asked to go through unwanted and unexpected and uncharted. Um, and so this is what I thought of around that. Now, actually, I see most of myself in Old Testament Joseph. Now, Joseph in the Old Testament, he was well-loved and confident. He was excited about the future, um, you know, that he was told he would have visions of being leader with uh, being a leader and, and uh, parents who favored him. Like, life for him was good uh, until it wasn't. Because as we know, Joseph in the Old Testament, um, well, he, has, he was abandoned in a hole by his own family and and that was that was bad but even though it was bad it just got a little bit worse because then he was sold as a slave uh, now if i were joseph i can't imagine the thoughts that i would be having like wait what why is this happening why is it getting worse why haven't you taken over by now where are these promised blessings that i hear so much about you know what i mean and then it went from bad to worse and then what happened well he goes to prison and he's in prison for years passing time i always say passing time is the worst thing i could ever be called to go through because at first something comes and you're like okay all right, let's do it. And then and then you put everything in and then time keeps passing and little or no change goes by. And then that is what to me is most difficult. And his life is passing him by. And I, I, if I were him, I would be thinking, where are these promised blessings? This isn't what the missionaries had told me would happen. What is going on? Where is he? Now, for me, pre-baptism, life was actually really good. Life was good. I wasn't seeking for anything. I loved who I was. I loved what I was doing. Um, but, you know, when God becomes a reality to you, it's just, it's even better. So I got baptized. And, and I thought, you know, if life was good without God, I'm unstoppable now. Like, are you joking? Come at me. I dare you. You know what I mean? Uh, so I get baptized. And, and then things got bad. Uh, you know, life for me was good, like Joseph, until it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't until uh, after baptism at the age of 21 that my life just, it just fell apart. Everything, you know. I had never known loneliness until I got baptized. I, I had never known such painful sacrifice um, and loss until I joined the church. Indescribable anguish. I had never struggled so long and, and so hard where my body would just physically ache I, uh, until I got baptized. So many times I spent 
screaming at God until I would actually lose my voice, just yelling and pleading at him. Times where I thought my, my, my faith and my God were, were failing me from the unwanted and the unexpected and the uncharted that I'm consistently being asked to go down. Is his path always going to feel this heavy and lonely? Skipping over losing every one of my friends. Skipping over losing my family and years, years of silence from my family. Skipping over leaving behind the only way of living that I knew of, moving all the way across the country to a place I had never been, where I didn't know a single person. Skipping over the years of silence from loved ones. Skipping over brutal judgments and, and words from people that I went to church with. Skipping over severe judgment and, and being outcasted. Skipping over the, the loneliness, the anguish, uh, the problem solving, the consistent struggles and, and sacrifices, all in the name of following the Spirit. I have felt like Joseph too many times where things have gone bad to worse to even worse. And you know, it would be too easy. It would be too easy to blame all of this on, on God. It would be too easy to step back and realize that none of this would have ever happened if I didn't put forth any effort. None of those things happened until I got baptized and turned to this supposed God. How easy it would be to just go back, to turn back, back where things were comfortable, back where things made sense, back where 21 years of habit and tradition and contentment and culture lay deep within within my roots like you i i know what it feels like to have nothing to show for your efforts like you i know what it's like to to wonder to wander to to doubt to struggle to sink to feel judged abandoned uh, unwanted unworthy tired tried uh, and alone like you i I just know how easy, how hard it is, how hard it is to keep going sometimes when you're just tired, you know, when you just feel tired to keep going, when we feel like we're hanging on by our fingertips and someone is pulling us by our ankles in the opposite direction, losing our voice losing hope, losing strength, forcing ourselves to use this faith that we don't even know if we have or not anymore. But how, how did my boy Joseph, how did his story end up for him? Did his life continue in these series of unwanted and even worse? Did his life continue in that pattern? Um, did his life continue in what seemed to be missed blessings? missed potential, missed promises, and ignored desires. Now, using his God-given gifts, we know exactly what happened to our boy Joseph in the Old Testament. Um, he interprets, uh, interprets, interprets <laughs> the king's dreams, and he did, in fact, become a leader. Now, he didn't just become a leader over his little area, over just his family. He saved an entire civilization. He became a leader of, of, of Egypt. <laughs> like, and, and he was reunited with his family. He had full circle moments. And not only was he reunited with his family, but he was able to bring his family to something better. A more abundant life, more abundant land. Something that he could not have done otherwise. That, that through it all, his, his trials, the whole, the slavery, the, the prison, the passing time, the wonder, the wander, the doubt, the questions, all of it had led him to greater things that were intricately part of it all to begin with. His promises of a great life with these, with these great blessings, his visions of being the leader, all of it was not only fulfilled, it was magnified. 
it, it was in every sense the ultimate magnification. God was not overlooking or ignoring or punishing. But in fact, he was working hard with every little detail to be sure it was even better than what Joseph had in mind. All of it, part of the plan to begin with, needed, necessary, and perfectly crafted for him at every stage and in every season and in every even worse moment. Thinking of Joseph during, during my hard times at ba after baptism, and when I say after baptism, I mean, um, the 11, almost 12 years since then. It's, it's ongoing, that pattern of bad to worse. <laughs> um, but I decided a while back to just give God a chance, you know? I was going to allow myself the opportunity for him to show me how great he really is. I decided, how do you do that? How do you, how do you allow him the opportunity to show us how great he really is? Well, I decided to see it through, hoping that, that God was a God of his word. And wow, did life blossom, you know? Never, never was it anything I was asking for. None of it. I never received anything that, you know, big that I was pleading for. But life, it just blossomed, you know? When, when you see your seasons through better than I was asking for, really. Yeah, maybe on my way to them, the path was longer than anticipated or harder, but vibrant and blossoming. Like Christ, who was sleeping on the boat during what seemed to be a life-threatening storm. And his apostles, he's waking, you know, these times where he, he seems like he's sleeping and we yell at him, we plead for him to, to wake up, to be mindful, to be present in our raging storms because we feel as though we may not make it. But Christ, he was not sleeping because he wasn't mindful or that he doesn't care. It's just that he knew that all would be well regardless of the storm because he was there. Because God is aware, he, he is leading, he is perfect, he is behind it all. Now, when I was pregnant, I have three children. One of them is only a year old, one of them is almost seven. Um, and when I was pregnant with my third, I found out that I was diagnosed high risk, a complicated high risk, and numbers were um, not in my favor. They, she, she was an on-call doctor when I went in for a routine check, and she told me in broken English, um, that I'm just probably not going to live. Um, she said I, I will bleed to death is what she said to me, which was great. Thank you for phrasing it the way that you did. I feel great. <laughs> and, and, and that pregnancy alone went from bad to worse to even worse with numbers not in my favor. And, and I had surgeries planned um, to save my life. Uh, and just last minute, last minute before I was supposed to have this scheduled surgery, the doctor said, it's gone. And I've never seen this in my career, but it just went away. And I remember leaving that appointment thinking, well, God is good, right? Why wouldn't I think that? But, but I hated that. I hated that I said God is good after I found out I was cured or whatever you know what I mean because what did that imply what what did that mean when I said that what is is God only good when I get what I want was God just not good the whole rest of my other pregnancy is God just not good in my whole in prison moments what does that even mean why am I only thinking that he is good when I am getting what I want what Miracles. The definition of a miracle is not avoidance and, and prevention. That's not what we are trying to attain. The miracle isn't avoidance and pre uh, prevention. It's, 
Miracles are not defined by just getting what you want. You know what I mean? Because if miracles really were about avoidance and prevention in our prison and our whole moments, then what does that even imply for, for Christ's life? His most painful sacrifice, his life of being falsely judged, abused, uh, murdered, you know, was his life of all of that? Was it because angels were not there? Was it because God was not mindful of him? Was it because Christ was not deserving of prevention? Or was it because God was not always good? No, there's no way. That sounds awful even just saying it. God, God is good. He is good even during our unwanted circumstances, in missed opportunities and in passing time, even though that's the worst to me. He, he is good because he is aware. He's awake. He, he is conscious good because he does not turn his back, nor does he close his eyes or, or neglect or abandon good because he is actively part of every little detail of our spirits. And he, he does not play favorites. He just, he doesn't. Good because we are part of something so much bigger than our narrow-mindedness. So much bigger than, than what's right here. God is good because he keeps his promises. Not abandoning or overlooking, but intricately and profoundly involved in bringing us to what's next. Good because whatever it is that that may be, he is there. He is in charge. He is leading. And he is perfect and all-knowing and all-powerful. And one of my, actually, it's probably my, my most favorite scripture to ever exist. It's in the Book of Mormon. It says, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Why? <laughs> well, because there is, in fact, something so much more to come. Something greater. So, so what if we got it all backwards? What if every step is the miracle? <laughs> now, it dawns on me how I limit a limitless God. I subconsciously put restrictions on him and I don't even realize I'm, I'm doing it. Now it's easy, uh, easier to see this with Joseph because we can see the start and the end of his life, but we can't see that with ours. We can't see where our life ends. All we may be seeing right now is us in a hole or us in prison. You know, um, it's hard knowing that our desires are not his will. It's then that fear and wonder and doubt come and we question if he really is there if he really does care if he really is aware or if he is sleeping on the boat if he is sleeping during our storms if he's really part of the details if promises of this great life were told of all of our membership with these blessings we hear so often if, if they really will be fulfilled but what would we do differently if we could see our end like we see Joseph's. What kind of life could we be living if we stopped keeping God at arm's length? You know? What could life look like if we trusted him completely? What if we see our seasons through? What could we receive if we gave God the chance to show us how great he really is. Now, if I'm being honest, I truly would not have a single thing I have now if it weren't for God and his ways. I want to say coincidentally, but it's when you believe in a real God coincidence, it's just not a word in our vocabulary. But every single time I have just dead weight belly flopped on the floor, which has been too many times to count, where I am screaming at him, wondering where he is. Every time I was wondering if he really is there has brought me to 
everything I have now. The best things. My favorite things. If it weren't for every moment I was wondering where he was because it has brought me to everything I have now and it just shatters me to picture my life any different. You know, of course things come together. I say of course because, you know, when we remember who God really is and his purpose, of course he will bring us to those better things, that ultimate magnification, even if on our way to them is on a path longer than anticipated. That's what he does. That is what his entire existence is about, is to bring us to the better and to make us better. That, that is why he exists. That's it. That's, he's here for us, to bring us to the ultimate magnification, not just in the life to come, but here, right now, in every season that we go through. And like the passing time with Joseph, he knows something we don't. He it's if we just keep going and not to pray for or expect trials to be prevented, but to pray to hold out for those bigger miracles, that ultimate magnification, those those greater than we even knew existed kind of things. Because blessings, they do not dim with passing time. Promise blessings do not dim with passing time. Because like with Joseph, we do. We have every reason to be excited about the future. We have every reason to be excited about here, right now, today. Even in our whole in prison moments, there is something to be grateful for because every moment you have a God and he is yours. His entire existence is for you through it all. You know? And if that isn't empowering, I don't I don't know what is. Because like with Joseph, he, he works hard making sure, you know, every little detail to make sure it's even better than what we had in mind. And, and I think we forget that. I think we forget that the unexpected is God intervening. I, I think we forget that his purpose is to bring us to the better. I think that we forget that we don't really want things our way. I think we forget just how thrilling it is to live by faith. What a thrill. Sometimes we don't always know the what or the why behind things, but, but we do always know the who, a God who is always good, even when our situation is not a God who solely exists to make us better and to bring us to the better. And no one and nothing, no one and nothing can change the only qualifying factor to everything a perfect God has for you. We're his. You are his. That's it. That's all there is to it. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are deserving of everything beautiful and vibrant in this life simply because you are his. That it's part of the, the territory of being an unchanging God. That, that, that just doesn't mean his commandments are unchanging, but love. It's unchanging for you through it all in every season. Our only qualifying factor to everything beautiful is yours you have it and it does not change you are his you can't change that uh, like a baby who is born and then the parents hold the baby for the for the first time and and they look down at them and they're just so overwhelmingly consumed with with this love for their new baby and it wasn't because the baby did anything it couldn't it was just born the baby didn't accomplish or 
or do anything to earn that love. The parents just profoundly and, and, and deeply loved that baby simply because it was theirs. When I think of all of the times I, I have doubts and, and I complain and I fail and I fall and, and I wonder why would the Lord ever want to be yoked with someone like me? Well, he reminds me that I don't earn anything from him. I'm not earning him. I'm not earning his love or his help. But simply and profoundly because I'm his. I, 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 and how much does he love us? Well, even as much as he uh, engravenly on the palms of his hands. <laughs> and because of that, everything else is just noise. <laughs> so, so what if we got it all backwards? What if every step is the miracle? Are we allowing God to be God? Are we giving him the chance to show us how great he really is? Are we seeing our seasons through? Yeah, hard times will always be there. I've been a member for 11 years and, and I still I still lose my voice in pleadings to him. Hard times will, will always be there, but so will God. And with him, do we overcome and conquer every feeling of loneliness or, or anguish or confusion? With him, we overcome and conquer uh, the world. The world! Your, your faith, your efforts, they, they are not in vain. They will, they will not give up on us. So don't give up on them. Your prayers, your prayers have been heard. Your prayers have been heard. But greater is what he has in store for you. Embrace the unexpected. Embrace the unexpected knowing who is guiding you because God knows something we don't, uh, something greater. So enjoy living, friend. Everything good is here just for you. Thank you um, for joining me here on our Saturday um, night. I just, I just, any bit of effort, anything that we do in hopes to feel and hear him is, is magnified and, and blessed. And you are feeding your soul. And it's just so great. It's just so great. Um, I'm a writer. I write things and I speak often. I have the gift of gab, although... Maybe it's not a great one, but I do it anyway. So if you want to come join me, um, it's my page. <laughs> I hope you have just, I hope you're doing well, friends. I hope you're just, it's going to be so good. Things are just so good, you know? <laughs>